Well, it's great to be here in Sydney with the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, his hometown. So here today we're going to talk about an important national infrastructure project for Australia's future. People of Australia, as we uh, go through this election campaign, often ask, rightly, what's your vision for Australia's future? Ours is very clear. We believe that our responsibility as the Government of Australia is to build Australia's future, to build the new industries, the new jobs, the new small businesses of the future. So we don't have all of our eggs in one basket. To build the hospitals that we need for the future through our health and hospitals plan. To build the schools of the future through our better schools plan. To build also the infrastructure of the future, including the national broadband network, a vital underpinning for the future of our national economy. And doing all that while maintaining as much effort as we possibly can to keep cost of living pressures as low as possible for Australian families. That's our vision. And when it comes to the big calls in Australia's economic history, we've been on the right side of those calls. We believe in building the nation's infrastructure and getting those calls right, and making the right calls, the big calls on the Australian economy, as we did during the global financial crisis. When uh, I uh, heard reports of um, uh, Mr Abbott's campaign launch yesterday, many people have asked me, well, what was uh, his vision? Well, obviously, that's for others to conclude, but I didn't hear much of that at all. And I think that's what the Australian people want to hear. Where do you want to take the country? Which policies are you going to embrace in order to get you there? And how are you going to do it? They're pretty basic questions. National elections are about priorities. And our priority on infrastructure is absolutely clear. And that's why I'm so proud of the investment, uh, decisions that have been made by the Deputy Prime Minister uh, in his capacity as Infrastructure Minister, the Minister responsible for Infrastructure Australia, and more recently responsible for the National Broadband Network. If we do not have world-class infrastructure, there is no future for the Australian economy. It's as basic as that. This vast continent of ours with 23 million people in it. Unless you've got the infrastructure pumping, well, frankly, it's not going to work. And that is a core part of our vision for the future. Because if the infrastructure is working and the new industries are being built, so we don't have all our eggs in one basket, then the bottom line is this, the jobs are there for the future. And if you don't have a job in the future, you don't have economic security. And we are passionate, therefore, about building those jobs for the future. The Deputy Prime Minister uh, has been hard at work on a range of infrastructure projects, whether it's road, whether it's uh, urban rail, uh, whether it's um, rail freight, and a lot of other things beside. But this is an exciting project for Australia's future that we are talking about today. The Deputy Prime Minister and I today are proud to announce uh, the government's uh, response to this important report uh, delivered by the High Speed Rail Advisory Group, which the Deputy Prime Minister commissioned some time ago. Those who are members of the advisory group include former Deputy Prime Minister Tim Fisher as well. It's a good report, and the government's response is appropriate given our national infrastructure future challenges. First of all, the government has decided in response to this report to legislate to preserve 1,750 kilometres of rail corridor all the way from Brisbane through Sydney to Canberra to Melbourne. Secondly, to legislate and invest in the establishment of a high-speed rail authority which will oversee the planning, the detailed market testing, the development of the full and final business case and to oversee the development of this project for the future. These are important decisions in laying out the future of our rail infrastructure for the economy's future. It's important, as I said before, to put all this in the context of priorities. Let me conclude with these observations. Our priority is building the future of the economy and building the future of our infrastructure. If we were to build 
this entire 1,750 kilometre high speed rail project from Brisbane to Melbourne by 2035. It would cost less than Mr Abbott's unaffordable, unfair paid parental leave scheme for the same period of time. Put that into context. What is more necessary for the nation's future? A high-speed rail network which links these vital cities along Australia's east coast, or an unaffordable, unfair paid parental leave scheme? My final point is this. There are many, many things wrong with Mr Abbott's paid parental leave scheme. But there's a particularly important lesson that we should all derive from what it says about his priorities for the future. This scheme benefits a small group of people, but everybody in Australia then has to pay for this scheme. And if Mr Abbott becomes Prime Minister, that is the principle which will apply across the board to everything his government, if he was elected, would then seek to do. Deputy Prime Minister, I turn to you and then we'll take your questions. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. I first want to take the opportunity to thank uh, those people who've participated in the advisory group. Uh, this followed the reception of the high-speed rail study that was done by ACOM, which we received in April. I then established an advisory group that was about community consultation. It received around about 320 separate submissions. It was chaired by Lynn O'Connell, the Deputy Secretary of my department, but it also included some prominent Australians, including the former Deputy Prime Minister, Tim Fisher, uh, Jennifer Westacott, the CEO of the Business Council of Australia, Brian Nye, the head of uh, the Australasian Rail Association, and other prominent representatives, including Peter Newman, who's a member of the Infrastructure Australia Council. What we wanted to ensure was that we got some hard economic analysis into the high-speed rail proposal. And indeed, uh, today they've produced uh, a report that I'm releasing on track, implementing high-speed rail in Australia. What it suggests is a range of recommendations. The government is taking them up. The government understands that high-speed rail is a part of Australia's future. High-speed rail is now on every continent, uh, including Europe and Asia. For Australia, the challenges are greater because of our less densely populated areas. But down the east coast, between Brisbane and Melbourne, we know that it is viable. What the report recommends is that the first stage would be from Melbourne to Sydney, and it does that because of the economic analysis that shows that $2.10 would be returned as a result of every single dollar invested. So this is a project that stacks up. What's more, it would lead to the creation of jobs, some 10,000 jobs during the construction phase. It recommends Sydney to Melbourne by 2035, and you would have Sydney to Canberra up and running by 2030. So it recommends taking essentially uh, bite-sized chunks of the larger proposal, doing it on the basis of where the greatest economic benefit would be. It also recommends an important process to make sure that the entire corridor is preserved from Brisbane right through to Melbourne and we will introduce legislation before the end of this year. My department has already begun working on that legislation. We also would establish a high speed rail authority which would include representatives from New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria and the ACT. This obviously has to be a project done in consultation with uh, the transport but also the planning authorities in the relevant jurisdictions. We will also work with Infrastructure Australia to develop a business case. I know firsthand that there is a great deal of interest from Japan, China, Spain, Italy and France from companies in these jurisdictions. One of the benefits of high-speed rail is it's a bit like what the automotive industry does in manufacturing and it's a bit like consistent with what the National Broadband Network will do. It is a driver of innovation 
in Australian industry. And with rail spectrum allocated, as we did earlier this year, specifically for rail, high-speed rail would certainly benefit from that as well. It would, it would spur new high-tech supporting industries delivering jobs and innovation. It will integrate our regional and our metro communities so that you can get from Sydney to Melbourne, CBD to CBD in under three hours. But importantly also, because the, uh, the route would flow through the Southern Highlands, Canberra, Wagga Wagga, Albury, Wodonga and Shepparton, this would be an enormous economic stimulus for those regional communities, delivering jobs and economic growth in those regional communities. It also goes without saying that there is substantial environmental benefits from high-speed rail. It is, in terms of uh, emissions, obviously a cleaner form of transport, and there are also benefits in terms of safety issues in terms of taking vehicles off our roads because rail is the most safe form uh, of transport as well. So this is about a low carbon, high productivity future. This is about making sure that we have a considered approach as well. We haven't, uh, we want to over, uh, uh, over deliver but under promise on this project. We haven't tried to suggest that this can be done tomorrow or next week. But by putting in place as well $52 million in the forward estimates to make sure that our commitments can be realised, uh, that will certainly be able to deliver that. And I conclude with this. One of the great divisions at this election is about building for the future, is about infrastructure. There's nowhere, there's perhaps two areas where that stands out as being very stark to me. One is the National Broadband Network which we will continue to roll out. They will, they said they would wreck it. That was the job that Malcolm Turnbull was given. He knows that lacks credibility. So now they're going to wreck it, but not tell people. They'll wreck it by stealth, by having fibre to the fridge rather than fibre to the home. What we also have a distinction on is in rail. This government has proudly invested more in urban public transport since 2007 than all previous governments combined. Tony Abbott is being fair dinkum and honest with the Australian people on this one. He's telling them we will have zero dollars invested in urban public transport, the same amount that the Howard government invested in its 12 years in office. We have urban public transport projects right around the nation. Another one announced uh, just last week at Tonsley Park in Adelaide. We have important urban public transport projects because unless you deal with that, you can't deal with congestion in our cities. Tony Abbott says that's someone else's problem. At the same time, we have rebuilt one third of the interstate rail freight network taking seven hours off the journey from Brisbane to Melbourne, nine hours off the east to west coast journey. What that means in practical terms is that companies like Woolworths have taken their dry goods off roads and onto rail. Good for safety, good for productivity. But also we have funding in our budget for projects such as the Inland Rail Project. $300 million as part of Nation Building 2 to make sure that you have an inland rail freight route through parks, good for agriculture, good in terms of the interstate rail freight network, but also uh, a very positive development in terms of taking pressure off the main coastal route. As well as that, we're investing in important intermodal projects such as Moorbank here in Sydney that's absolutely vital and will take 2,300 trucks off Sydney's roads every single day. So our record as well as our future commitments is very clear when it comes to rail. With the High Speed Rail project, uh, we believe this is a very important part of Australia's future. Thank you, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. So our vision uh, is clear for building the future. Infrastructure is a core pillar of that vision. Uh, whether we are building the national broadband network, whether we are building the urban transport network uh, for so many of our larger cities in the future, whether we are building a high-speed rail linking these major cities on the East Coast, or whether we are also building inland rail for the future as well. We believe in infrastructure. 
it underpins future industry, which in turn underpins future jobs, and jobs is our number one priority. Over to you, folks.